at ottawaks.gov were given to the city commission to be read during public comment or during discussion on an agenda item. The commission must describe at the beginning of the meeting the process that will be used for a closed or executive meeting pursuant to KSA 754319 and amendments thereto. Thank you, Misty. Now I'd like to have you call the roll of commissioners. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kemp speaking. Uh, Mayor Wygand. Present. Commissioner Taylor. Present. Commissioner Crowley. Present. Commissioner Skidmore. Present. And Commissioner Jorgensen. Present. This is Mayor Wygand. I want to welcome everyone uh, to this meeting. Uh, who are watching uh, us on Facebook Live and uh, listening over the phones and other sources. With that, let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and then uh, Blake Jorgensen, uh, Commissioner Jorgensen will lead us in the invocation. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Blake? Sorry, I had to get myself unmuted here. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, since before the time of Moses, you showed your eagerness to guide your people. Thank you for your compassionate care. Today, we place our work and ourselves into your hands. Please anoint our creativity, our ideas, and our energy so that even the smallest tasks may bring you honor. God, when we are challenged, please guide us. When we are weary, please energize us. May the work that we do and the way that we do it bring hope, life, and courage to all whom we represent within our community. Please bless this commission with wisdom and discernment. Please bless the city's workers with commitment and compassion, and please bless our citizens and, our, and their families with courage and strength during these trying times. We pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Jorgensen. We have a consent agenda before us. Uh, we have the minutes of the August 24th meeting of the study session, the August 31st study session, the September 2nd regular meeting, the September 14th study session, and the September 16th uh, regular meeting minutes, uh, as well as the uh, agenda approval. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'll make, I'll make the motion to approve our consent agenda. Thank Commissioner Kaler, we'll make this second. Thank you, Commissioner Kaler. Any, any other discussion? If not, uh, I would do this by all in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed, we have uh, approval of our uh, consent agenda and our regular agenda. Okay, item eight, are there any public comments uh, there are not. There are not. So we will <clears throat> dispose, dispense with reading the uh, item eight. But I do ask at this time, I'd like to give the commissioners a chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues impartially. Anyone have uh, a problem with that? Thank you very Mr. much. Mayor. No, actually, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jorgensen. Um, yeah, this is Commissioner Jorgensen. I, um, as I said at the study session, um, uh, item 14, um, I do have a professional relationship with the contractor on that item. Um, although it is not a uh, conflict of interest uh, to the letter of the law, I will avoid any appearance of a conflict of interest on this item and abstain from voting. Thank you. Commissioner Keller, did you? Yes. Um, I did want to declare that I have had communication with um, the individual who owns the property um, listed in item 14 and um, that came to me via email and I'm not sure that I didn't get two different communications but yes I have talked to that or have uh, 
had communication with that individual. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for those disclosures. I, I, I don't see a big problem there, but uh, I understand. Um, at this time, we have uh, item 10. Uh, Misty, you wanna read that? This is Misty Kim's acting city clerk speaking. Proclamation recognizing National Friends of Library Week, October 18th through 24, 2020. This proclamation highlights the work of the Friends of the Ottawa Library to support additional programs and projects at the library throughout the year. Terry Church here, Ottawa Library Executive Director will accept the proclamation and uh, Commissioner Crowley will read the proclamation. And the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas Friends of the Ottawa Library raises money that enables our library to provide resources for additional programming that supports children, teen, and adult programs and special projects throughout the year. And whereas the work of the Friends continually highlights the fact that our library is the cornerstone of the community that provides opportunities for all to engage in the joy of lifelong learning and to facilitate connection with the thoughts and ideas of others from ages past to the present. And whereas the friend's gift of their time and commitment to the library sets an example for all to observe how volunteerism leads to positive civic engagement and the betterment of our community. And now therefore the governing body of the city of Ottawa, Kansas does hereby proclaim October 18th through the 24th of 2020 as National Friends of Library Week signed this 21st day of October, 2020 by our mayor, Tom Wygon. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Terry, would you have anything you'd like to say in that regard? I do, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Wygan and City Commissioners for recognizing National Friends of Libraries Week. Ottawa Library has been blessed with our very own Friends Group for over 47 years. I would like to share a bit of Friends history that was written, written by Marty Underwood, who served as president of our Friends Group from 1991 to 1992. The establishment of the Friends of the Ottawa Library occurred as a result of a discussions held in 1971 concerning the official beginning of the Ottawa Library Endowment Fund. The founding of the Friends of the Ottawa Library is recorded as 1973. In 1972 to 1973, the following Ottawa Library Board of Trustees worked on the organizational draft of the Friends. Bill Bennett, Jane Bird, Pat Collins, Harold Gannigan, Dr. Andrew Martin, Dottie Wellington, and Nancy Winter. In 1973, Thelma Lewis, Robert Pence, and Jerry Thompson replaced members on the board. Friends bylaws and guidelines were drawn up by a committee consisting of Dr. Dr. Andrew Martin, Pat Collins, and Nancy Winter. Ottawa attorney Robert A. Anderson was consulted by Peg Carr and Alameda Edwards concerning the legality and structuring of such an organization. January 21st, 1973, the first meeting of the Friends of the Ottawa Library was held. The agenda was created by Ottawa Library Board of Trustee members, Dottie Wellington, Nancy Winter, Gene Park and Library Director Nell Barnaby. Alan Lloyd was acting temporary chairman. February 18, 1973, the first executive board of the Friends of the Ottawa Library were elected as follows. Alameda Edwards, president, Peg Carr, vice president, Connie Zook, secretary, Fred Hoopman, treasurer. By 1980, the board expanded to seven members. Current board members are Barb Jansen, President, Glenine Brown, Vice President, Vicki Hall, Secretary, Linda Fredericks, Treasurer, Steve Anderson, Jane Clark, and Bob Riedel. You prob probably recognize some of those past and current names. Friends of the Ottawa Library raised funds through memberships and book sales. They ran annual book sales from August 1973 to 1997 at Skunk Run Days. With the move of the Ottawa Library from the Carnegie Library building in 1996, 
the friends needed to find a new home. The city of Ottawa offered the friends space in a warehouse in October of 1997. After spending time and money on renovations, the Friends of the Ottawa Library Bookstore opened at 209 East 2nd Street with one sale a month in July, 1999. By June of 2000, the Friends decided to welcome shoppers while the sorters were working on Mondays. Friends of the Library is a completely volunteer group. The current bookstore hours are Mondays from 1 to 2.30 and the first and third Saturday of each month from nine to noon. Current membership levels are as follows. Individual family is $10, friend is 25, patron is 50, benefactor is 100, business is 30. Store prices, children's books are 25 cents, paperback books are 50 cents, hardback books are $1 or up, DVDs are $1. We have had many wonderful community members serve on our Friends of the Ottawa Library Board, work as sorters, and support Ottawa Library through their Friends membership dues. We are so very thankful to have 47 years of volunteers in this organization who raise funds and advocate for our Ottawa Library. Thank you, Terry. That was uh, very interesting. Um, we've had a lot of great people. Uh, that have uh, served on that board. I recognize the names of, I believe, all of the founders there. Mm -hmm. And uh, 47 years, it's remarkable. Do a lot of good work. Thank you so much for reading that. You're and thank them for all the work they do and provide for services for the library. Thank you, I will do that. Okay, item 11. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kem speaking. Request for approval of agreement with BG Consultants, Inc. for engineering services for the City Connecting Link Improvement Program, CCLIP, project on K-68. With commission approval, BG Consultants, Inc. will do the design and engineering for this project to repair concrete joints and storm sewer inlets on K-68 from Poplar to the Meridazine River Bridge. Uh, Mike Hayfley uh, spoke to us the other day at the study session. Have you got additional comments today, Mike? This is Public Works Director Mike Hayfley. I don't have anything additional, but just for, for public knowledge, uh, this project is a fiscal year 2022 project along K-68 from Poplar to the, to the bypass bridge. And although this is a, a 2022 project, we need to do the design and engineering before before then so that we can let the project in within uh, the fiscal year of 2022. So the funds were budgeted for this for the engineering uh, and design in this year's in this year's budget. Um, the the project the or the design and engineering did come in underneath our estimate. So we're respectfully requesting to approve the contract and either authorize myself or or Richard to to sign the contract and proceed forward. Michael, could you share the numbers with the public? Absolutely, Mayor. This is Mike Hayfley, Public Works Director. Um, the estimates for the project on the design were 37500 The contract is for $34,000. The estimate for the engineering inspection was $26,100 and the, the contract is, came in at $25,216. So we are underneath the project estimate for this. Very good. Mr. Commissioner, sure. do you have any questions uh, before we move to a vote? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Commissioner Jorgensen. Move to approve the request as described in item 11 of our agenda. Is there a second to that? Commissioner Skidmore will second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Uh, Commissioner Skidmore, uh, just one, one brief question on this. Michael, will this include uh, sidewalks? This public works director, Mike Hayfley, uh, this does not. This is, this is only paving, uh, repairing the concrete pavement 
in that area. The sidewalk project is is underway. We are designed. We're almost ready to go to final KDOT approval on that on that sidewalk project. So this is a completely separate project from that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I call for the vote. Uh, Kim. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kim speaking. How do you vote, Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. And Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Oh, sorry. And uh, Mayor Wigan. Uh, and I vote yes to uh, motion carries. Uh, Michael, I do have a question though. Um, leading up to the, uh, the bridge, are, are there plans for doing an overlay or repairing that bridge over the Meridazine? That is really getting to be kind of a rough deal. This is Public Works Director Mike Hafley. Uh, yes, I, KDOT representatives have told us that that is in their budget to do a bridge deck repair on that on that bridge within the coming year. That is in their plans. They haven't let the project yet. I haven't seen any plans for it yet, but they have they have told me that that is in their plans. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, item uh, twelve. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kim speaking. Request for approval of resolution setting the date, time, and place for a public hearing to consider condemnation of a single family structure at 628 South Willow Street. This resolution sets a public hearing for December 16, 2020 at 10 a.m. to consider the condemnation of a single family structure at 628 South Willow in Ottawa. Uh, Terry, Omar, are you, are you on it? Uh, Mayor, we saw the information at study session. Mayor, this is Wendy Lee, Director of Community Development. Yeah, Wendy. Um, Terry has a court case this morning, so he couldn't um, handle the, the presentation of this PowerPoint, so I'll be doing that. i um, going to share my screen um, and start the PowerPoint. So uh, we have two of these actions today that we um, want to share with you. The first is um, 628 Willow, honestly. I don't know if they're in for sure the same order as your, yes, 628 Willow. Um, and then the second one is 819 East 8th. But this first one, um, the owner moved out in early of 2019. Um, the uh, department representatives sent a letter asking them about their intent with the structure, um, indicating that they thought, you know, we needed to see action on that. The, the son of the owner asked for extension until this year to make repairs. Um, unfortunately, there was uh, additional reach out to the owner uh, and no, no responses. Um, but then in September, the son did contact staff again saying they were trying to sell the property. Uh, at this time, no permits been obtained and there's um, no indication that work is imminent. Um, the taxes are current on this property. The structure has been vacant. It is dilapidated and staff recommend setting the hearing um, to uh, provide for the public's comments. As you can see from these images, um, there are a number of structural defects and um, it's unquestionable that it is providing um, a blight influence to the neighborhood um, and does um, put it put people at risk for accidents and other calamities. Um, and so uh, you've got the full reports and Terry just you know provided those to you and we talked about that briefly on Monday. Um, I will let you know that because you uh, elected to put this on your agenda for today, um, we did do a recount Tuesday morning of the required notices. There's two notices required um, as well as a mailed notice, but two publications. Um, based on the timing of this meeting and the meeting in December, we can actually move this hearing up to December 2nd at the 7 p.m. meeting. Um, and that would be our preference. In the past, we try to make public hearings at night. And so we have provided the clerk um, a revised resolution but should you feel like you want to hold that hearing at your December 16th meeting, uh, 
we have both available for you um, on these. But we think that that gives uh, a night meeting is usually better for owners um, and neighbors. It also gives a little bit more time before the end of the year for us to um, work with them um, about what their efforts are. In any case, once these, um, if you should adopt the resolutions and that communication goes to the owners and they elect to uh, pull permits before then, uh, we'll work with them on their plan for reconstruction, remodeling, if that's the direction that they choose to go. Um, so that is um, the summation for 628 South Willow. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, this is Mayor Wigan. Uh, I know that we have to treat these separately, but why don't uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about uh, the East 8th Street property and then we'll discuss. Okay. Uh, okay. I want to be sure. I'm not sure if you're looking. Did you all see all those pictures? I'm not sure what I've got two screens open, which you're seeing. Um, did you see we're that? not seeing we're, we're seeing the uh, commentary. Yeah, we're seeing the pictures now. Okay. Here were the pictures. Sorry, I apologize for that. I was looking at what I needed to say and I needed to be sure you saw these images um, of the structure as it exists today. Um, and then I wanted to be sure that you knew that the resolutions we've provided now would allow for that to be December 2nd. Okay, so moving forward again, this is Wendy Lee, Director of Community Development. The second structure that we put on the agenda today is 819 East 8th Street. Um, this one has had a longer history as far as uh, written communication. Um, at one time, there was a rear addition that was uh, collapsing and the owners did remove that. That was the urgent issue back in the early days. Um, but the structure has continued to deteriorate. The owners moved out in early 2019. Um, in 2020, we were notified that the property had been purchased and that it would be removed. Um, and in June, it was sold. Um, staff has met with the owner and they are aware of what needs to be done, but we've not had any further contact. And given the condition, again, feel that um, by calling a hearing, we can set the right tone and timing um, for if repairs are going to be made for them to be made. Um, so taxes are current on this property as well, um, which is great, uh, but the property has been vacant and does appear to be a blight to the neighborhood um, from our perspective, um, there are defects in it structurally um, and certainly the maintenance of the walls and siding and property um, are not up to standard. Um, you can see some pictures, even the deterioration from 2019 to August of 2020, uh, the roof is in, is in dire need and is failing. Um, and once you get uh, additional water in there, um, it begins to erode any ability to restore the structure. Um, some of the additions on the rear obviously are suffering as well. Uh, so. so this is the second item. You have two resolutions, um, one for each one. That's how they are required to do. And the notice would, or by passing the resolution, we would call the hearing, do the proper public notice as well as the notice to all of those that have any property interest um, so that they can attend that public hearing um, and share why it should or should not be condemned. Or if they choose to take action before such time, um, we'll work with them and then update you uh, in advance of that public hearing notice. Okay, this is Mayor Wigand. I uh, appreciate that explanation, uh, Ms. Lee. And that, um, uh, are the utilities are the utilities shut off on both of these properties? Let me look here in the files. Um, they look like in a great deal of stress from the pictures. <clears throat> Commissioners, if have you got any comments or questions? So, She's looking up the answer here. Uh, Commissioner Crowley here. Um, I was going to ask the same question, for specifically more so about 628 South Willow, about the utilities being off. Uh, after seeing this on our agenda last Friday, I drove by it. Um, it just happened to be at night. 
and it looked yeah. to me like there might have been a light on um, inside. So I was also concerned about potential squatters if that wasn't a, a uh, uh, in use property. Um, from what I'm seeing, and I'm, I started with the 628 Willow, um, it doesn't say they're off. Usually if they're off, we put a hold on them and there's not a notation that we've put a hold. Um, we sometimes at, at a point like this, if we know the structure's fine, we can continue to watch it in case there's squatters because if that uh, situation starts to develop, then we will board the structure um, in order to prevent that from happening. Um, and I'll, I'll visit with Terry and staff to see if they believe uh, that it's at risk for, um, for example, with the electrical in particular, at risk for a fire if they're still connected. Um, but if they, um, yeah, we have not requested any disconnection uh, at this point, but we have to also be mindful that if you take away the power and there is heat happening, that that would then potentially result in the pipes uh, being uh, at risk. And certainly we're headed into the colder weather. So we can have a visit about that and visit with our attorney. Commissioner Crowley here again. Is is that is that 628 South Willow property have a do not occupy on it? Yes. So okay. I just was updated. Charlotte did say that they are off. Um, and, and so we just put holds on them. Just my paperwork wasn't showing that. So they are off. That should answer that. Uh, Mayor Wigan, this is Sarah Kaler speaking. Um, I uh, want to, I don't have any concerns about either one of these. Clearly, both of these structures are in um, not livable conditions and um, probably are a blight to the neighborhood um, and, or not probably, are a blight to the neighborhood. And I think that the staff at Community Development has done a really good job of um, presenting a really fair and balanced report for us today. And um, I would believe that we should move both of them forward. I can make an individual motion if, if you're prepared to take one at this time. I would uh, accept the motion on, on those proper, uh, the individual properties. Um, and uh, the motion probably should include the date. Um, well, we probably want to have that discussion before because it appeared as though, um, Mrs. Lee, did you not discuss a couple different options on dates? Um, this is Wendy Lee, Director of Community Development. The original uh, resolution that we had prepared for you for Monday um, anticipated that there would be two study session discussions and that the action would not take place till November. So it, by law, was re then required to be at the December 16th meeting. Because you are prepared to take action to call a hearing today, um, we revised those two resolutions and provided them to the clerk to enable you to update that date to December 2nd at 7 p.m. So there's no legal reason that we can't go ahead and um, I make the motion to have a public hearing for December 2nd. That's right. Okay, perfect. Then I will make the motion um, to place a, or to set a public hearing to consider condemnation for um, the property located at 628 South Willow on December 2nd at 7 p.m. And Commissioner Skidmore will second that. <clears throat> Been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? I call for the vote. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kem speaking. How do you vote, Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. And Mayor Wigan? And I vote yes to. Uh, motion carries. I would entertain a motion for. The other property, 819 East 8th Street. I'd make the motion to um, set the public hearing to consider condemnation for the structure located at 819 East 8th um, for December 2nd at 7 p.m. Commissioner Crowley will second. I've been moved and seconded. Any other discussion or comments? I would call for the vote then. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kemp speaking. How do you vote, Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. And Mayor Wigan? And I vote yes also. Uh, 
thank you for your work on this, uh, uh, Wendy. And um, uh, we need to uh, um, take a look at these unsafe properties from time to time. Uh, let's move on to uh, item 14. This is acting city clerk, Misty Kim speaking. Request for approval of ordinance vacating a portion of utility easement on lot 16, block one of the Westwood number two edition. The owner of the property requested the vacation to allow for construction of a new single family structure. A public hearing was held. The planning commission has reviewed and approved the request by a vote of six zero. Uh, we've heard about this. Uh, Wendy, you wanna speak to it a little bit? Uh, yes, sir. This is Wendy Lee, Director of Community Development. This vacation is a request for the east three feet um, of the west 10 feet of lot 16 uh, is a broad way of doing that. That address or that, uh, yeah, that address is 35 Westwood in case anyone is uh, curious. Um, so when a property is platted, um, the easements that the utilities all believe are necessary, along with the right of way that the public works and others uh, establish as necessary, that's part of the platting process. Uh, this subdivision is 15 years old or so. Um, well, I think phase two may not be as old, but nonetheless, the initial um, preliminary plat is when all of that is identified. Uh, the owner requested to vacate this in order to build a, a slightly wider house than they would be able to do um, because they would not be able to encroach into that easement area. Uh, the community development department uh, sent the request to the development review committee as well as the utility advisory committee members which are comprised of all the utilities, public utilities. Um, uh, so in case, let's say Kansas Gas or somebody who we don't have their mapping uh, does have something there, they're notified. Or if they're planning a project, um, sometimes something they have may be in an area, but in order to, uh, you all know that when we do water, we may extend water, but then we always want to loop it. So those kind of opportunities are sometimes uh, what happens in easements as well. There were no responses or no, no uh, uh, objections received uh, in regard to the vacation. And so um, then the planning commission's role is just to be sure that we did give proper notice. Um, we did call the hearing and notify the affected property owners, um, conclude that no prop private rights are injured or endangered, um, as well as that the public would suffer no loss or inconvenience. Um, and so as a result, they recommend to you to vacate this partial easement um, <coughs> for the applicant's um, project to move forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Wendy, are there any, any uh, questions, comments before we move uh, on this? this uh, City Manager Mr. Neinstead? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you. Richard Neinstead, City Manager. M Mrs. Lee, just uh, uh, real quickly, um, I know that this is from uh, probably the original date that these easements were done was around 2000. Is there anything we can tell our builders or developers who are different owners of land like this than from the original um, that they may wanna look at uh, and help expedite in 2020 because it might not be the same as 20 years ago? Um, it, it's really true whether you're a builder or a developer or just an owner of a property. If you have an easement on your property, um, it's really incumbent on you to know what it's there for. Um, so that if you're planning a garden or a fence or an addition, any of those things, um, it may look like to you on the surface that there's nothing about that that would impede your project. Um, however, below the surface or overhead, people oftentimes don't catch our electrical lines. Um, there are things there that would uh, not enable the project to move forward. So the earlier that they are, um, one, informed of their own property, boundaries and easements, which they can discover by checking their legal work if they're if they the owner, um, or at least visiting with us early in their process. Um, we've had situations where pools couldn't be placed where they wanted to place, sheds have had to be relocated. Um, we've had people alter the terrain in a storm drainage easement. Um, and then 
unfortunately, whether it's community development staff or public work staff or utility staff, we then have to advise those citizens that uh, they cannot do what they've done and that they've now violated some things. Um, it's just important to understand more about what's above and below and around your property that we take for granted. In order to serve every property, we're required to have those public infrastructure things, gas lines, power, um, cable, AT&T. Um, some things are easy. Uh, you know, if you look up, you're oftentimes gonna see power, but in a lot of our new subdivisions, that's not true. Uh, you, you don't know where it is. You know where the box is, you know where it hits your house. You could assume a straight line, but that's not always true either. Sometimes doing a dig safe will identify that for you. Um, but sometimes it's your responsibility to know where those things are. And then if you're planning a project to have enough time for us to look at it and see. Uh, it worked out in this case that there uh, didn't appear to be a conflict. I'm, I, I know I had at least one utility remark that they might need it in the future. Um, otherwise, sometimes when people approach us with an easement, we would actually consider whether the entire easement or right of way of an entire strip would be appropriate. Early this year, we had a homeowner want to put a fence uh, along, a, uh, along a roadway. Uh, it was his side yard. He was on a corner. Um, we spent actually two months trying to make that work. Now, he had not submitted a formal application. He was doing an inquiry. He wanted to know if he'd be receiving support. And it turned out that Kansas Gas had a significantly, a, a line that was significantly far from the right-of-way. And so this vacation of right-of-way that which looked good to Dennis and Mike and I couldn't be supported because they were not going to allow for a fence if the right-of-way was vacated. Well, that was the goal of the project from the property owner. Um, so he didn't spend the time and the money to apply because he got his answer because we spent some time trying to figure out if it could be done. Um, so it just isn't always easy to be done, but when it is, we try to accommodate it if it seems right for the organization. Um, but our job as staff is to be sure that the long term of our organization's utilities, as well as those of the other public utilities, are met first. Mr. Mayor Wygand, I got a question. Uh, you had mentioned that somebody built a, I, I believe, a fence or retaining wall, moved some dirt or something that. Uh, was in violation or, or went over on some kind of an easement. Uh, are, are, when someone comes in uh, for a building permit or some kind of a permit on their property, is it always checked to whether they have, uh, an, there's an underlying easement next to them or on them? Or uh, I, I, I believe this, this easement was caught by the owner after they had the permit to build the house, but I'm not sure of that either. I don't believe the permit has been granted. Um, the, uh, when we ask for a property owner to do a diagram, they're supposed to identify all of that. Uh, in a case like this, where it's a recently platted area, it's actually fairly easy to find out. Um, and so when the first question came up, um, I, I asked staff to actually go check the final plat because sometimes the preliminary plat shows something that isn't actually adopted in the final plat because they moved a line or didn't need it to be where it was illustrated um, or didn't construct it where it was illustrated. Um, because there was some question when this one came up about was it for stormwater and was the stormwater in the right place. Uh, there was a platted easement here, so it was easy to find but it's actually the owner's responsibility to know where their easements are. And if they have questions, we can help them, but not all easements are the cities. And sometimes easements are filed directly from Kansas Gas or Department of Transportation or AT&T. We don't always have those available to us. That's why we, I, we involve all the rest of those parties asking whether or not they have any concern in an easement that we do know about. Um, but there are times when people, even with a permit, I'm sure, have built somewhere that later we discover was a problem. I know of a house that was built, uh, I mean, I started here in the 90s. This house was not new then, and it was over a stormwater. It's not unlike the house that um, the public works removed up there on Logan. It was built over a stormwater box. Well, now, in today's standards, we would not do that. Um, 
but these, this is, you know, it's incremental, I guess we, we try to avoid that and then try to refrain from it happening because if it appears that it's not needed, then we should eliminate it. But if we want, I, I am also aware of some places we had to go back and acquire right away where we had vacated it previously. So we have to, we have to use some sound judgment, try to look at it for the long term. I believe ordinarily uh, easements are are in uh, deeds, uh, title companies uh, explain or show the purchaser uh, that there is an easement on the property, and uh, and so that is that can be the responsibility very early in the game and and get that recognized. Right. So anyway, commissioners, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on this? You want to anybody going to make a motion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. This is Sarah Taylor speaking. I move that we approve the ordinance vacating um, the utility easement listed in item 14 at 35 Westwood um, in Ottawa. And Commissioner Skidmore will second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the vacation of the portion of the utility easement. Um, any other discussion? If not, I will call for the vote. This is Acting City Clerk Misty Kim speaking. How do you vote, Commissioner Jorgensen? Stain. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. And Mayor Wigan? And I vote yes to uh, motion approved. We have a report by the city manager. Commissioners, Richard Nine said city manager. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I have one thing as a part of um, the shares funding we received, one of the projects um, we received funding for was that we're between now and the end of the year. Well, between now and December 30th, uh, we are going to be, we meeting the city, are going to be reminding and encouraging our citizens, all citizens, why it is important to wear a mask, right? Why it's important to wear a mask. Um, you'll be hearing it on COFO. We're trying to work out some details with the Herald so that people can get information there. But I would just say this, that uh, we're going into, uh, as those of you who have children in school know, um, it's these are extremely dicey times. Um, uh, the, the more cold weather we have, the more we are all in the same room together, the more the spread of infectious diseases. And this fall, we will have two things to worry about, uh, COVID and influenza. And the experts tell us that they are worried about a twindemic. And the mask, when you wear the mask for COVID, it protects others from you. Uh, now, the mask works a little bit different for influenza, but it does help to mitigate the spread of that also. So I would also like to add for our public that's listening is if you if you buy fast food, if you go through a drive in um, and I know there are some other businesses that you do drive ins through also um, wear your mask, wear your mask, that person at the window. Um, they're serving you, but they need to feel like you are protecting them. Wear your mask. Even though you're sitting there in a the car, you're getting the food. Um, almost all of the servers I have seen at our, our restaurants or fast food restaurants come to the car are wearing a mask. So they're protecting you. Please do your part to protect them. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <clears throat> Those are uh, good words. We heard uh, that's still a, still a little bit uh, political, but uh, it's important for science to know that uh, that does help us stay away from that. And we are spiking and we will continue to spike is my understanding. And so we need to be wary of uh, the risk we're taking. I call for the uh, commissioner's reports. Uh, commissioner Jorgensen. I have no report today. Commissioner Crowley. I have no report. Commissioner Skidmore. 
No report, thanks. Commissioner Kaler. Um, I do have just a short little thank you that I wanna send out. Um, as individuals know, we have um, had a census going on for the last several months and it concluded on October 15th, which is just about a month or a week ago. Um, we did have a really uh, diligent complete count committee and I believe that they need to be um, given some thanks for what they did. As we all know, everyone who's on here and I'm sure everyone who has listened, the importance of the census and how important it is for our community for the next two years or 10 years. Um, and so these individuals sat on our complete count committee, Donald Anderson, our, Bla our own Blake Jorgensen, Stephen Bradley, Crystal Anderson, Derek Chapel, Diana Starsnick Dean, Gloria Matthews, our own Gloria Matthews, Janet Paddock, Jody Smith, John Cohen, Lisa Slavin, Marie Gardner, um, Lisa Rockers, um, Melissa Busamonte, uh, Midge Ransom, our own Paul Summer, um, our own Richard Neinstead, uh, Dr. Ryan Cobbs, Stephen Haiga, um, our own Matt Simonson, uh, and our own Mike Hazley and Dennis Hadel, um, all sat on that committee, and I appreciate every single thing that they did. We also had some businesses that really stepped up and made sure that individuals knew how important the census was. Kansas State Bank, um, the co-op, uh, Price Chopper, Constantino's Price Chopper, and um, I really uh, want to thank them and let them know that um, how much we appreciate uh, their willingness to um, get the information out about the census. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. That, uh, that was an extremely uh, important function. A lot of people involved in that and I'm gonna go home and take my sign down. Uh, no more counting, I guess. Uh, I would, um, uh, just uh, want to want to say that uh, uh, we need, and, and this is an election coming up, and I know that's one of the probably one of the largest turnouts. So uh, I hope uh, to emphasize that uh, no one should stay away from voting. We have time uh, to do do that now, as well as uh, on election day, November third. It's an important uh, one of our uh, democratic rights to do that democracy uh, in action and also uh, just re-emphasize the, uh, the, to be aware that uh, we do have a pandemic on our hands and everyone is trying to do the best they possibly can uh, as we go forward and try to get out of that thing. Um, I do have announcements. Uh, October, um, actually today, uh, we have a meeting by Zoom with the city, the county and the school district. Uh, that's not uh, Richard Shaken. Not true. The commissioners is a meeting by Google, and oh, that invitation has been sent out by USD 290. So I wouldn't want our public to be looking for Zoom when this is on Google. So, okay. Thank you. I, I don't know if you know, but you got somebody looking over your shoulder right now, Richard. So be careful. A big guy. The, the, uh, uh, the, we do have a meeting, a distance meeting uh, at noon today, October 22nd, next Monday, we have a four o'clock uh, study session also uh, by Zoom, November 2nd, another study session, four o'clock uh, via Zoom and November 4th, our regular meeting, it will be at 7 p.m. on that Wednesday uh, by Zoom. There's nothing else to come before us this morning. I'm going to adjourn this meeting at uh, 10.50.